With us, so we proceed with leader's questions, understanding order 36. I call on the acting leader of Sinn Féin, Deputy Pierce Doherty, please. Agisahanishta, <laughs> Tamalti Kore and Tasi Shin Fain, like calling Yeklish and Yer Kimshaw, Lishna Kostashi Alwedu, Agis La Kodula Dini, Agis Tasha, and Nashna Kush Emni, Do Alwen Dini. Kai and Realtis Rechiha, Redle, Agis Wellvina, Agora Gri, Agis Kai Gregini, Akasin, Agis Kodu, Modis Kart or Hortifa. Tonish, the Irish people face the cost of living crisis, there's absolutely no doubt about that. In the 12 months to December, inflation reached the highest levels in 20 years. Rents are spiralling out of control as a result of your government's housing plan. Childcare costs amount to a second mortgage for many, many families. Putting food on the table and running your car has never been more expensive. Energy prices rose by 27%, with the cost of home heating oil has soared by 53%. And prices will continue to rise with workers and families under pressure like never before. The government now, your government, has had months to deal with this, to deal with the cost of living crisis, but you failed to come up with a comprehensive plan to support these households. Instead, the government is trading sound bites with leaks from parliamentary party meetings rather than real and immediate action. And the Irish people deserve a government that understands the difficulties that they are facing, not a government that ignores, delays, or indeed even makes things worse in some cases. And the time to act, Tanishta, is long overdue. Not all households will feel the cost of living crisis equally. We know from the CSO that the poorest households spend three times more of their income on heating and lighting their homes than the richest households. That those in the middle spend twice as much as those at the higher ends. For months Sinn Féin have been raising the issues of the cost of living with you, with your government, with the Taoiseach, and we've been bringing forward proposals that the government have rejected over and over again. Since September, before the budget, we told you that what was needed was a 10 euro increase in so social welfare core rates to protect those most in need of support. What your government provided didn't even keep up with price increases, and therefore it's a de facto cut. These families will be poorer this year than they were last year. We must see, Tanisha, an additional 5 euro increase in these core rates to prevent families and children from being worse off this year than they were last year. We in Sinn Féin have called for an extension of the fuel allowance season by two weeks for the eligibility criteria to be expanded so that more people can avail of the fuel allowance. Again, your government has refused to deal with this. And your government needs to halt the plans. It's just crazy that within three months that your government plans to increase the cost of home heat and oil and gas by ha heaping on another carbon tax on those uh, on those commodities, despite the fact that home heat and oil has increased by 53% in the last year and energy prices up by 27%. So you need to stop that increase that is about to take effect on the 1st of May. We've called for a refundable tax credit, equivalent to one month's rent, putting up to €1,500 Euro back in renters' pockets to deal with the fact that rents are out of control, rising by over 8%, and we need to ban rent increases for the next three years. Tanisha, that is some of the action that is required. These are some of the measurements that you and your government could take to deal with the cost of living crisis. So far from trading sound bites at your parliamentary party meetings and selective leaks, let's deal and get on with the job that you were elected to do. Let's govern, let's make sure that people were protected. So can I ask you, do you plan to take any meaningful action in relation to this situation? Not sound bites, because it's the time for government to do their job to protect workers Thank and families you, from being fleeced. Thank you very much. Tarnished. Thanks, uh, thanks very much, Deputy, for raising, uh, raising this very important issue uh, again today in the House. Um, government acknowledges that the cost of living is rising. Uh, it's rising very, very fast at the moment, uh, faster than it has in 20 or 30 years. Uh, and people are feeling the squeeze, um, whether it's the shock of looking at your gas bill, whether it's the electricity bill, whether it's the rising cost of uh, filling a tank uh, of diesel or petrol. Everyone uh, is feeling it in their pocket. And of course, uh, those on lowest incomes feeling it more so uh, than those who are not. Um, and the government gets that. We've already taken action. 
um, much of which was opposed uh, by your party, uh, some, of, some of which was not. Um, and we acknowledge, though, that the action that we've taken to help families with the cost of living is not enough. Uh, and for that reason, um, the three party leaders who we met on Monday night uh, commissioned nine ministers to develop proposals um, for a package uh, of measures that will allow us to help families um, with the cost of living. That's being worked on at the moment. We'll have further discussions on it uh, today, um, meeting with the unions and employers this afternoon, a chance to discuss it then. Uh, there'll be uh, a committee meeting of the Economic um, uh, Cabinet Committee, which I chair next week, which will be another chance to discuss it as well. And we will make a decision on it, and we'll make it soon, uh, certainly in the next couple of weeks, um, because we do acknowledge that the cost of living is rising. Uh, we acknowledge uh, that it's uh, causing a huge squeeze for a lot of families. Um, and we acknowledge that as a government, we have to do something about it. And we're aware that other governments in other parts of the world have taken action too. Uh, and we believe uh, we must do so as well. Uh, I think in terms of the context, it's important to bear in mind that when the budget was prepared um, back last September, October, uh, the estimates for inflation were somewhere between 2 and 3%. And we built the budget on that basis. Um, but that is not the case. Uh, it turns out that inflation has been much higher. It's in around 5%. Uh, and rather than being a temporary phenomenon, uh, while it might moderate, it looks like we may be stuck with high inflation for a longer period than we would have anticipated. So when facts change, uh, you need to adjust your policies. Um, and that's what we intend to do. Um, but I would point out um, that this time last June, uh, because of inflation, and back as far as Mar last March, I was talking about the possibility of inflation, um, as far back as last June, uh, I was strongly advocating uh, for a personal tax package, welfare increases and pension increases in the budget. Uh, and we achieved that, uh, and that was done. Uh, perhaps it wasn't adequate, um, but it was done. But let's not forget that your party opposed the reductions in personal taxation. Why did I advocate uh, reductions in personal taxation? To make sure that people getting a pay increase got to keep it. Because people earning over 38,000 to get a pay increase lose half of it in income tax. So I wanted to make sure that people getting a pay increase, and thankfully most people will get a pay increase this year, got to hold on to it. You didn't want that. And I also wanted to make sure that those workers who don't get a pay increase, and you mightn't realize this, but there are some workers who won't get a pay increase this year um, because their employer won't provide it or can't provide it, I wanted to make sure that they would get something. Uh, and you oppose that too. And I think you need to be honest about your positions as a party. Uh, it might be the case that you um, object to increases in, in carbon tax because of climate skepticism and so on, but you also object uh, to reductions in personal taxation. And the truth is, um, when it comes to after-tax after tax income, uh, huge numbers of people in this state, um, middle-income people, uh, will be worse off uh, if, we, if your budget had been introduced uh, than ours. Um, and that's a fact. But we acknowledge that things have changed since then, that the cost of living has increased by more than anticipated, uh, and we need to act on that, and we're working on those proposals now. Thank you, Donishta. Deputy Doherty. Minister, the cost of living crisis didn't just fall from the sky overnight. It's been here with us for many, many months. We've been raising that with you. Indeed, we've been raising that with you before the budget. You failed to adequately protect those in social welfare recipients who pay three times more than the highest than the wealthiest in the state on energy costs. So therefore, under your package that you approved the budget, they are going to be poorer by hundreds of euros this year than they were last year. So I'm asking you, we have a proposal. The way to do this is to insulate them from that cost of living crisis by increasing core social welfare by 5%. You plan to increase... You plan to increase the cost of oil and gas on households on the 1st of May, less than three months. 17 euro in terms of gas, 19 euro for every fill in terms of uh, home heat and oil. That has already increased by 53%. Can you stand here and say that you will stop that increase taking place at a time when people are seriously struggling? Rent is a serious impact in terms of inflation also. It is increasing by 8%. We need to ban rent increases. We put those proposals before you, not weeks, not months, but actually years, and put back into people's pockets a refundable tax credit of up to €1,500. Euro. And cutting the cost of childcare, Tanishta, is another way to reduce the cost of, uh, of, you, of, of living on these families by reducing it by a third, by making the proper investment. Yeah. There are solutions Thank there. You. We've time given you them Debbie. time and time again. Can I ask you, what are you going to act on? Thanks, Deputy. Um, the government acknowledges that uh, inflation, particularly the type of inflation that we have at the moment, which is very much driven by higher energy prices, uh, is, is impacting uh, on those with lower incomes more so than those with higher incomes. Um, that's clear. Uh, people on lower incomes spend more on energy, spend more on fuel, or a higher percentage of their income 
on energy and fuel and groceries than people on, on higher incomes as a consequence of that. And you're right about this. Uh, inflation impacts on different households in different ways. Uh, and inflation at the moment is impacting more seriously on lower income households um, than higher income households. Um, in recognition of that, uh, in the budget we did increase core social welfare rates, we also increased the fuel allowance, we also increased the living alone allowance, and we also increased the child dependent allowance. And we did those things uh, precisely because um, it was the lowest incomes that were impacted uh, most. But as I said earlier, uh, we acknowledge that more needs to be done. We're working on those proposals now. Uh, I hear your proposal for an increase uh, in core social welfare rates. The difficulty with that uh, is that a lot of working people aren't on social welfare. Uh, and you might not appreciate this, but people who are working hard, people who are in middle incomes on paper, even people who may look like they've good incomes on paper, also have, have to deal with a high cost of living. And your proposal would exclude them. It would only. It would, oh, yeah, Thank you, yeah, but, but what Shirley. about somebody who has a mortgage? What about somebody who's not on social welfare? Your proposal wouldn't help them. Thank you, Tony, please. Fuel we move now to the.